All right, so I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so everybody should be able to see my screen now as well, uh, as well as hear me. Um, so this is the main screen that your students will see when they access BrainFuse. Um, so the main point of the webinar today will just be to go through all the different services that are offered here. So I'll explain how everything works. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions you have uh, as we're going through the webinar. So I'll try to stop and ask for questions every now and then, but you don't need to wait for me to do that. If you just want to shout out a question, um, that'll be fine as well. Okay. Um, okay, so this is the page your students will see when they first access BrainFuse. Um, I'm not 100% sure where you've placed our link, but you know wherever you place that link, make sure students are aware of it, and that's where they'll go um, to click on the link and access our, our home page right here. Um, all the options we'll look at today, they're all customizable. Um, so if any of these services we look at are totally irrelevant for your students, um, each of these buttons here can be removed. Um, so just let me know. Um, so there's basically three tabs here. We have expert help, and then study, and then collaborate. I'm just going to start with the expert help option here um, and work my way through the different options we have. So each of these buttons is a different service we offer. Uh, the live help button here is the first one. It's, it's sort of our foundational service. Um, so this is where you'll go uh, when you're a student who's looking to get live help from one of our tutors. So you can connect and ask a homework question, ask a, a practice question, you know, preparing for a test, um, or just get general help on a topic that you're working on. So you click on the live help button here. Uh, and then to connect with one of our tutors, you just choose the option uh, that you'd like from the drop-down menu here. So these are the different topics we have available. Uh, I'll go through each of them. So we have business, and then within that, we have accounting, econ, and finance. Within computer and tech, we have Excel, PowerPoint, Windows, and Word. Within English, we just have reading and writing. Within math, we have a number of math subjects here, up through calculus and statistics. Uh, we have a number of nursing subjects here, and then a number of science subjects, including anatomy, biology, chemistry, and organic chemistry, and physics. So the student just chooses the one they'd like, clicks on the Get Live Help button, and they'll connect with one of our live tutors who can either help them with a question they have or go over a topic that they need some additional help with. You can also click here if you'd like to get a Spanish-speaking tutor. Um, we'll look at a live session, uh, but I'm gonna, going to do that at the very end. So we'll go through all the services first, uh, and then we'll look at a live session. Um, right next to Live Help, we have what we call Learn Now. Um, it's the newest service we've released. Um, so basically this allows the student to search by topic or by subject and essentially see all the resources that we have available to them. So you're not connecting with a live tutor. You're essentially searching through the, the more static content that we have available. So things like text lessons, video lessons, um, those will all be found here. So if you click on Learn Now, you can choose from the different topics available up here at the top. So let's say I just choose general college here. Now these are the topics that we have available within college. I can choose algebra, for example. Within algebra, we have all these different subtopics here. So for example, the, the first one here is number types. So within number types in algebra, these are the resources that we have available. So the, the ones that are labeled as lessons, you can click on one of these, and it will show you a text lesson that looks like this. So you can work through uh, or look through our text lesson here. If we go back, we also have video lessons. that we've. These are all things that we've created, so they're all, all created by us. Um, you click on the video lesson. This will actually play a video, sort of like a teacher um, conducting a, a session in a classroom. So these have audio, um, and they'll go through some sample questions here. Um, so that's what Learn Now is. It sort of allows the student to study on their own without connecting to uh, one of our live tutors. Um, I see someone just logged in as well, um, Brian. So Brian, if you have any questions you'd like to ask, um, you should see a chat box in the GoToMeeting window. Um, you can type out questions there. And I also just unmuted your microphone. So if you have any questions you'd like to ask out loud, um, you can do that as well. Uh, back on the main page here, uh, that was help. Uh, sorry, that was live help and learn now. So our next option here is the writing lab. 
So the writing lab is where a student would go if they want to send in a piece of writing to us to have it reviewed. So a student's writing a paper or an essay, they can send it in here to get some feedback from our tutors. So the student clicks on the writing lab button. They just follow the steps here to send in a document to us. So you just browse uh, the files on your computer, attach the one you'd like. You can send in any document type. Uh, and then you can add any comments here in the comments box. And then when you're ready, just click on the submit button. So that will send that file into us. It will go out to our tutors. One of our tutors will work on it and send that back to the student within a maximum turnaround time of one business day from when the student sent it in. Um, but as soon as a student sends that to us, it's available to our tutors. So if one of them is available at that time, they might work on it and send it back within an hour or two. Um, and even though we say one business day, if you send something in on a Friday night or Saturday morning, almost every time we'll send that back within 24 hours at the most. We just say one business day to be safe. Um, so when the student sends that in to us, uh, again, it goes out to our tutors to review. When the tutor reviews it, they'll send back something that looks like this file right here. So we always include our rubric form on the top. So this is our rubric, which contains a number of sections the tutor will have to fill in with their comments about that student's paper. And then if you scroll down below the rubric, you'll find the actual paper that the student sent in and the tutor will include comments within the paper itself as well. So all the comments you see here in the blue bolded text, those are from our tutor. So that's what a reviewed paper will look like. Um, so our tutors are focusing on providing comments and suggestions on how to improve the paper and how to improve the student's writing. So we're not trying to be an editing service where we fix everything up and then send it back to the student all ready to be turned in. You know, it's more for us to give them feedback that they can take into consideration uh, and then go back, make changes, uh, and make their paper better. But the change will have to be made uh, by the student. Back on the main page here, next to the writing lab, um, we have this button here. Uh, it's going to be called something different uh, that makes a little more sense, something like send question. Um, so basically this will allow a student to send in a question to us. Um, it'll work just like the writing lab except this button here will be used for um, any other academic questions. So you can send in a math question, science, anything like that, uh, and one of our tutors, again, will respond within one business day. So it works just like the writing lab. So if I click there, you just choose the topic and the subject of your question. You can type out the question here, or you can also attach a file. That's optional. Um, and then click on Submit to send that in to us. So again, we'll respond within one business day. Um, again, our tutors are never going to just give out answers to questions sent in here. You know, they'll work through a similar problem to show the student how that type of question is done, or they'll give the student some resources or some hints, you know, something like that, but we'll never just give out an answer. Um, next, we have the language lab. So this is where a student would go if they are an English-speaking student who's working on learning Spanish. Um, currently, Spanish is the only language we offer here. So you'll see it's the only uh, language available in the drop-down menu. So you can choose Spanish, click on Connect with Tutor, and that will connect you with a live tutor who can help you with learning Spanish. We also have the option within Live Help here, where you can click on the checkbox here to get a Spanish-speaking tutor. Um, that option is usually used by a native speaker, so someone who wants to choose one of the topics we offer, you know, for example, pre-calculus, and get help in that topic from a Spanish-speaking tutor. The language lab is for someone who's learning Spanish. Um, next we have the Adult Learning Center. This is one of the buttons that may or may not be relevant for your students. Um, this button here was designed to be used uh, by libraries who have adult learners coming into their library to, to get some help with various items. So that's what this button was designed for here in the Adult Learning Center. Um, basically these options on the right are duplicates of ones that we'll see back on the main page. So we have live tutoring and skills building, um, the writing lab, and 24-7 help where students can send in papers or questions, um, and then our test center, which we haven't looked at yet, but we have a test center back on the main page as well. Um, so these are sort of duplicates. The options on the left here are additional uh, that are only available here in the Adult Learning Center. 
Um, so we have an option to help with anyone preparing for the GED test, um, for anyone who's preparing for the U.S. citizenship test, um, anyone who's working on writing a resume, we help with that here. Uh, we also help with uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Um, and then the last option here for career resources is essentially a list of websites that students can use to find available jobs to apply to. Um, so it sort of goes along with the resume button. So that was very quickly what's, what we have here in the Adult Learning Center. Um, it's offered on your site now, so it'll be there unless you'd like us to remove it. Um, but it's, it's just another option for your students. And then back on the main page here, the last option in the Expert Help tab is LEAP. So we call this our College Skills Program. Essentially, this lets you take a diagnostic test in certain subjects. Um, and then based on the diagnostic results, you're assigned a study plan that will help you with learning those topics uh, on the questions you answered incorrectly. So we only have this available for certain subjects uh, right now. So when the first time you click on that LEAP button, um, it, this is not the page it'll take you to. It'll take you to this tab right here. I click on the Take Diagnostic tab. Um, it took me to that study plan page because I just took a diagnostic earlier to show you what it looks like. So the only topics available currently are English and then reading or writing and then math and college algebra or pre-algebra. So you just choose the one you'd like. Click on Start to take the diagnostic. Once you've taken that, you'll have a study plan page just like this one here. So the chart up at the top here will fill in as you work through the different items within your study plan. And those items are down here. So we have lessons, video lessons, and little mini quizzes, the little two or three question quizzes. Um, so as you complete one of these lessons, again, the chart up here at the top will fill in. Um, so these lessons and video lessons are some of the ones that you can find within that Learn Now button that we looked at uh, a little while ago. Okay, um, so those are the options here within the Expert Help tab. Uh, I'll just pause now for a few seconds to see if anyone has any questions uh, that you'd like either to type out or to ask out loud. So we wanted to know, um, is, li is the live help, what are the hours for the live help? Is that 24-7? Um, I'll have to get back to you. It varies by account, so I'll have to check what exactly it's set up for your account. Um, okay. So let me do, I'll make a note of that, and then I'll, I'll get back to you either after the webinar today or probably tomorrow. Okay, okay. And also, we had a question about how, so the hours that the students are allotted their docs when they access live help. Oh, yeah, so else. that was the other question. I guess you'll probably end up having to get back to us, too, is that um, we were wondering when the students access live help, like, we, you know, we're giving our students a certain amount of hours that they can utilize. Yep. And so with that, I guess we were trying to figure out, especially like with something like the writing lab, how many hours would they get docked for using that since that's kind of a service where they put it in and then don't yeah. get the paper back. With yeah, so, yeah, so for the live help, you know, it's just the amount of time the student is logged in. Um, right. and, and for the writing lab, they're charged at 30 minutes per submission. Oh, okay, okay. That, that what, about sounds good. what about the question point? Is that the same for question point? Yeah, those are the same, 30 minutes. Okay. But then they can use Learn Now and the other, the other resources for, like... So when they're doing Learn Now and the other resources, then is it just the time that they're logged into that? No, those are all That's free. Like, but those are not okay. counted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Then. Yeah. So you're only being charged when you're using our tutors, essentially. So for Live Help, Writing Lab, Question Point, anything like Learn Now or the resources in the Adult Learning Center um, or LEAP, no, none of the, you're not charged for any of those things. Okay, okay, that sounds good. That's good for them to know on the call, too. Yeah, okay. yeah. Any other questions right now? Not from us, unless any of them have questions. No, I haven't heard any uh, or seen any typed out yet. Um, so I'll go ahead and move on to the study tab here. Okay. So within the study tab, uh, we have a few options here. So the first one is Flashbulb. Uh, this is essentially an online flashcard service. Um, so instead of creating flashcards, you know, hard copies of flashcards, when there's something you're trying to memorize, students can go here uh, and enter their flashcards online. 
Uh, and then we have a lot of uh, options that will help them with memorizing that you won't have with hard copies of cards. So if I click on that button here, most students will use the Create Now button here on the left. So that will let them enter their own cards. And also terms they're trying to memorize from biology class or whatever it is they're trying to memorize, um, they can enter here. You can also click on all the different subjects we have over here and essentially search through sets of flashcards that have already been created. Uh, they're mostly just created by other students, you know, so they may not be accurate. No, they're not all. They're not created by us. The majority of them are not created by us. Um, so you can use these if you'd like, but most students will use the Create Now button. Um, you will need to create a username and password to create a set of flashcards here in Flashbulb. Um, so the system will ask you for that. And then once you enter that and create a set of cards, you, know, you can log back in anytime and access those sets of cards. Um, I'm going to click on one of the sets that's already been created here just to show you how it works. Um, so this right here is one set of flashcards. So if you create one, you'll have a page that looks just like this. And then you can click on all these different icons down here to do something different with the cards that will help you to memorize them. So the first button here you can click on and just essentially look through your flashcards. You can click it uh, to see the definition. If you don't know it, you can put it in the incorrect pile or you can put it in the correct pile. Um, there's a number of games here you can play. For example, the crossword puzzle option, the system creates a crossword puzzle out of the words that you entered using the definitions that you entered over here as the clues. Um, there's a number of other games. You can take a quiz or a test. Um, you can print the cards out if you do want hard copies of them. So there's just an, a number of options there, all designed to make memorizing a little bit easier for students. If we go back to the main page here and into the study tab, uh, that was the flashbulb button. Next we have GRE. So if you have any students preparing to take this test, we have some resources here for them. So we have live tutors available for the GRE test. We also have practice tests available. And we have resources available to help you study for the GRE test. So for example, these are the resources that we have. So you can click through all these options here. Uh, then back in the study tab, we have the same options um, as we did for the GRE that we just saw. We have the same options for AccuPlacer and Compass. Um, so for AccuPlacer, we have resources, practice tests, and live help. And then the exact same thing for the Compass test. So again, not every school, uh, these, these tests are not relevant for every school. So if you'd like these to be removed, uh, we can do that. Um, and then the last option here in the study tab is our general test center. So here a student can essentially choose from one of our basic topics here and take a practice test. So you can choose math, calculus, or whatever the subject is. Choose take a test. That will assign you that test that you can take. Um, once you've taken a test, you have this My Tests button right up here at the top. So your test results will be saved here. Um, a lot of students like to take one of our practice tests and then log in with one of our live tutors and our tutors are able to access your test results and go over the questions that you answered incorrectly. Um, so that's a, a good way to practice that, that a lot of students use. Um, and our tutors can do the same thing with a, a test that a student took in class, you know, the previous week or the previous day. They can upload that document to the tutor and have the tutor go over those questions with them, you know, or with a homework assignment, anything like that. Um, okay, so those were the options here in the study tab. Are there any questions about any of these buttons here? Okay, I haven't uh, seen any questions. Um, is, is everyone still able to hear me? Is the audio, st audio still working correctly? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I'll go ahead and move on to the Collaborate tab here. Okay. Uh, we just have two buttons here within Collaborate. Uh, I'm going to start with Brainwave on the right side. Uh, so this one says Create and Share a Movie-like Notes and Ideas. 
So essentially in Brainwave, you're given a smart board where you can type out or draw whatever you'd like on the board, and our system will essentially create a little video recording of whatever you put on the board. Um, the easiest way to explain what Brainwave is is just to show it. Um, so these right here are two Brainwaves that I've previously created within this account. If I want to create a new one, I just click on this button right here. So this window opens up. This tells me a little bit more about Brainwave. And then when I'm ready to begin recording, I can click down here at the bottom. Uh, we call this our Brainwave Notepad. It looks very similar to our online classroom, which we'll see in a few minutes. Um, except, of course, now we're not connected with a tutor. The system is just recording whatever I put on the board here. So I have the chat box down at the bottom. I can type anything out here, and that will be recorded. You know, essentially, this full window right here is what's being recorded. Um, and then anything I put on the whiteboard here will be recorded as well. So you might use this to show how to solve a multi-step math problem. So I can use our graph tool right here to put a graph on the board. I can use our shapes tool right here and choose the line option to add a line to the graph. You know, maybe I'm going to solve a problem that involves finding the slope of that line. I can type out the equation here. You know, I can work through all the steps um, to answer that question, whatever it is. So uh, it's recording again. So when I'm done, I click on the Stop Recording button, type out a name. Let's just call it Demo. Uh, what's today's date? 916. And then Save. So that will save that brainwave right here on this page we were just looking at before with the other two brainwaves I've already created. So I can click on the Play button to replay that brainwave. Or you can also click on the envelope icon over here to send that brainwave to somebody else. So you just type in an email address and you can send that to someone. So these can be created by students and sent to fellow students or they could even be created by teachers or tutors or professors um, and sent to students. Um, you just need the email address of the person you're sending it to um, and it's sent as a link and not as something you need to download. So you'll just click on the link and it'll play the recording. Um, we also have the library tab right here. So that will let you search uh, by keyword to see if there are brainwaves created um, on a topic that you're working on. Just like with the flashcards, though, most of our brainwaves in the library here are student created, um, so there's no guarantee uh, of their accuracy. Um, and you can always click on the My Brainwaves option right here at the top of the page, and that'll access your brainwaves page right here. Uh, if we go back into the Collaborate tab, that was Brainwave. Next to that, we have our Meet option. So Meet essentially allows you to schedule an online meeting using our online classroom with whoever you'd like to invite. So it works very similarly to a regular live session when you're connected with one of our tutors, except in a Meet session here, you're not connected with our tutors. You're only connected with the people that you invite to the session. Um, so this could be used by students to host a study group, or again, it could even be used by a tutor or a professor um, to give some extra help to students outside of the classroom. So you click on the Meet button here to schedule one of these sessions. Um, you do that just by entering the email addresses here of everybody you'd like to invite, put in the date and time, a description of the meeting, and then click on Send. So that sends an email to everybody whose email address you entered with a link they can click on to join that session. Um, so again, all the, the people you invite will need to do is click on a link that's emailed to them. So there's no download or anything like that. And you can invite people from outside of the college system as well. Um, once you have one of these scheduled, you have the My Calendar option here at the top of the page. So this right here is one that I scheduled earlier. Um, so I could click on the Enter button over here to start that session. Um, the way these work is very similar to a regular live session with one of our tutors. So I'm going to go ahead and look at a regular live session first, um, and then we'll come back and look at one of these meet sessions here, and I'll show you the, the few differences that we have. Um, so those were all the options available here in our three tabs. The last two are in Collaborate here. Um, I've gone through most of the buttons up here at the top of the page. Um, past sessions, I'll, I'll get to that when we connect for the live session. My Cloud Pack right here is a storage device. So when you click on this, um, these two subfolders here are ones that I added 
So when you open this for the first time, you won't see these subfolders. Um, you can add whatever folders you'd like here and then upload any documents you, you want to save into those folders. So in one capacity, it'll work just as a backup storage device. But the nice thing about CloudPack is that any documents you have saved here can then be accessed when you're in a live session. So if you have a paper you're working on saved here, you can upload that onto our whiteboard in the online classroom to share it with your tutor. You can also do this in a Meet session. So I'll mention that again when we do connect for the live session. Uh, message Center, I believe I mentioned this before, but this is where the documents you send in uh, are saved. So anything you send in, if we go back to the home page, through the Writing Lab, any papers you send in to us, or questions you send in through this button here, they'll all be saved within the Message Center. And this is where our tutor's response will show up as well. Um, okay, before we connect for the live session, um, are there any questions about anything we've gone over? Okay, um, I don't see any questions yet or hear any questions. Um, so I'll go ahead and connect for a live session. Um, so if I click on the Live Help button right here on the main page, I can then enter a topic. Let's say I choose Math and Pre-Algebra, and then I click on the Get Live Help button. Um, this is our online classroom here that's opening up. Um, this window will always be the same, no matter what subject you choose. So you'll always see uh, the same... Uh, online classroom right here. So this is what it will look like. There's really two main parts to the online classroom. We have uh, the whiteboard space up here at the top and then in the instant message chat box down here at the bottom um, that's where you'll type back and forth from the tutor uh, with the tutor. Um, so this is a tutor who's on right now so I can click down here and type something back to the tutor uh, if I'd like to. Um, so that's where most of the back and forth communication occurs. You know, the sessions pretty much always start with the tutor figuring out what exactly the student needs help with. So the tutor will see that I chose pre-algebra, you know, or whatever topic I chose, um, but they won't know anything other than that. Um, audio will always be deactivated when you're connected with our tutors. So in the live sessions with our tutors, everything is done through the chat box and the whiteboard. Um, in the meet sessions that we'll look at uh, in a few minutes, uh, those are the sessions you schedule with whoever you'd like to invite. In those sessions, you, you will be able to use audio. Um, so that's the chat box down here. Then we have the whiteboard space up at the top. Um, this area can be used for a number of different things. Um, if the student needs general help on a topic, the tutor has access to all the lessons that we have created. So the tutor might load our lesson on the topic that the student needs help with. Um, and then the tutor could work through that lesson with the student. So that lesson would appear right up here in the whiteboard space. Um, tutors have other resources they can load as well if that will benefit the student. Um, but then most of the time this area is just used you know, to go over a math problem, a chemistry equation, something like that that the student needs help with. So you can type out up here on the whiteboard using all these buttons we see here. Um, I'm going to go over these, but I'll do it when we connect in the Meet session in just a few minutes. I don't want to take up too much time from this tutor uh, who's on, online right now. Um, so I'll go over all these buttons we see here in the Meet session. So you'll have these exact same buttons available within uh, a Meet session as well as in a regular live session here with our tutors. Um, this space can also be used though to upload a document. You can use our copy and paste button right here to copy and paste text or images onto the board. Um, and also with CloudPack, that was the storage device that I showed you before, any documents you upload into your CloudPack, you can use this button right here to access any of those documents and essentially upload them right onto the whiteboard here. So those are other ways that this area can be used. So you could use that to share a paper you're working on with the tutor. You could use that to share a math worksheet, you know, anything like that. Any standard document type can be shared. Um, okay, I'm going to close this window and then go into the Meet session. So if we go back to the home page, uh, Meet was within the Collaborate tab here. So you click on the Meet button here to schedule one of these Meet sessions. So you can follow the steps right here. Um, I've already scheduled one, so if I go into my calendar, I have the Meet session right here. So I can click on Enter, 
to start that session. So this right here is the Meet whiteboard that the moderator will see. So the person who schedules the Meet session you know, is known as the moderator. Um, so they have this whiteboard here. Um, you'll see it's a little bit different um, than the one we just looked at. The participants in the Meet session here will see the exact same whiteboard as the one that we looked at before. So it's only the moderator that will have these additional buttons up here at the top. Um, you still have the exact same ones along the left-hand side here. And then even though you have all these additional buttons up at the top, you'll really only use the ones that are in color. And these are pretty much the same ones that you have back on the main student whiteboard. Um, you can all, the tutor or the moderator here will also have the option to create extra whiteboards. So if you run out of space, you can create a new board, and then you can scroll back and forth between whiteboards. Um, the tutor, our tutor will have this option as well in a regular live session. Um, so I'll quickly go over these buttons along the left-hand side. So they work a lot like Microsoft Paint. You can put your mouse over each one, and it tells you what that button will do. Um, anything put on the whiteboard will be visible to everybody who's connected in that session. So normally it'll just be you know, our tutor and the student, or in a meet session here, you know, it might be four or five students connected, or you know, a tutor, uh, a campus tutor or a teacher, along with a few students. So anything put on the board, everybody will see. So most of the buttons here are self-explanatory. You can change the color of anything you put on the board. So for example, if I change it to red, then whatever I put on the board is in that color. Um, the copy and paste button here is very useful. So you can copy and paste part of a paper you're writing if you're connected with a writing tutor, um, or you can copy and paste a math problem you know, from an online source uh, or images, anything like that. Um, the graph tool and the number line tool here, you have the choice of either one. Um, these are useful for math problems. We saw that before. Say I change the color again, and then I can use the shapes tool to put different shapes on the board. Uh, math gives you a long list of math symbols in case you need any. Um, for an equation or something. SCI does the same thing for science. Uh, then you can do uh, use this button for superscripts and subscripts. And down at the bottom, you can clear the board. Um, the buttons up here at the top that are in color, we have the Cloud Pack one again. So any documents you have in your Cloud Pack, you'll be able to access them here and upload them onto the whiteboard. The Print button will print out the whiteboard. So if you went over how to solve a problem and it was particularly helpful, you can use this button here to print it out. Um, however, you don't need to do that because you also have uh, here on the website the past sessions button right here. So all of your live tutoring sessions will be automatically recorded and saved here within your account. So you can essentially rewatch a video recording of your tutoring sessions uh, from this page right here. Um, then we also have this button. Um, it's called BrainShare in this window. When your students are connected, it'll say send file to make it a little, little bit more obvious what it does. Um, so basically it lets you upload a document directly to your tutor. So you can click on this button and then upload a Word document, PowerPoint file, any standard document type directly to the tutor you're connected with. Um, and this button right here lets you enter an email address and it will send you a link that will let you view the session recording. So you can type in your own email address or somebody else's um, and it will send them a link to the session recording the same session recording you'll find here on the past sessions page. Um, so that's how uh, our live classroom here works. Um, those, those options we just went over will be the same whether you're connected with one of our tutors or in a meet session here. Um, the only differences, uh, the only differences you'll find in a meet session here um, are the audio option which I already mentioned. So the audio option down here will be activated. Um, so if everyone has audio capabilities, they'll be able to speak back and forth. You can also have additional people in the session. So instead of just a tutor and a student, you, know, you could have four or five or more students connected in the session, you know, or a, a campus tutor with you know, two or three students they're helping out. So you can have multiple participants. Um, and the other main difference is that the moderator of the session, so the one who scheduled the session here, will have the option of clicking on each of the participants' names in the participants box here and you can essentially give each person a private whiteboard. So right now, we just have the one tab here that says public. 
but you can create separate tabs here for each student connected in that session. Um, and then the, on those tabs, anything put on the whiteboard would only be visible to that one student and to the moderator. So it's something that might be used by uh, a tutor or a professor if they're running a, one of these sessions. So they can give extra help um, to a student who needs it, or if one of the students is just working, one of the students uh, is working on a different topic, you know, they can work on that on their whiteboard um, and use the public whiteboard for uh, a different topic. Um, other than that, though, the online classroom is the same uh, for either a session with our tutors or in a Meet session. Um, okay, that's pretty much uh, all the options that your students will have access to here. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over. just want to make sure I uh, touched on everything up here. Um, yeah, I think we went over everything. Um, so now I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Um, you can feel free to ask them out loud um, or type them out. Um, or I can go back over something as well. Uh, maybe I went over it too quickly. So just let me know what I can do. I have a quick question. Sure, go ahead. When can we start using this? Um, as soon as the link is posted. Um, Wendy, I'm not sure. Do you know if the link is posted and active for students yet? So um, the link is posted on our site, but what we need to do is to give you guys the names of the people who are allowed to use it. Yeah, that's actually and something I, I wanted to ask you about was the, the roster. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll be able to give that to you. Actually, I can email you that today. Okay. And then once you get that going, then we'll have to just um, pass on whatever information you give me to give to the students. Okay, yeah, sounds great. Just send that to me whenever you can, and we'll get that uploaded. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that today. Okay, um, and the other thing I wanted to mention, Wendy, is if you could send me, um, this is optional, but if you could send me a logo for your college, we'll put that here on the site, um, and we can okay. also add that to the flyers as well. Okay, good. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, does anyone have any other questions for today? I guess I have one more. Just where um, are you going to send this to us as a link so we can at upload it to our site, or is it a link that I could just email out to those students that weren't able to log in today for the webinar? Usually, I just I create a YouTube link and I'll send that to you. Does that work? Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so I'll send that to you. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. This was excellent. No problem. Uh, if you need additional webinars, we're happy to schedule them as well. Okay. All right. Oh, thanks. that was a, that way. One more last question: If students have question like while, questions while they're actually on the site, um, like say something's not kind of working the way they thought, who would they call for that? Um, they can call us. We have a tech line. Um, they can also email us. Um, in the contact us button down here at the bottom, okay. you can use okay, this right perfect. here. So there's a phone number and a, a form here they can fill out. Okay. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for attending. Have a great day, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.